Hello and welcome back to another lathe restoration video. Currently I'm working on a video to replace the spindle or make a new spindle for here. And I've come to a bit of a bind because I need to wait for a tool to come so I can cut a thread onto that spindle. Long story, but you'll see it in the next video probably. While I'm waiting for a tap and die to come for that, I'm going to make a video on building a banjo for this lathe. Now a banjo is used to hold your tool rest, which is this piece here. So your tool um, sits on here and you move it around into the work um, to do your turning. And this obviously fits into one of these holes and it can be twisted around and adjusted up and down. This is not a very long one here, normally they're a bit longer than that. So we'll probably make a tool rest in a different video, but it's the banjo, this piece here that I want to make. When I bought this lathe that came with these two, they look like homemade banjos. Just a bit of pipe welded on a couple of bars that are joined at each end. Those are three quarter inch or around about 19 millimeter solid steel bars. And they have a gap in the middle. And that's where you would put a bolt and there would be a plate that fits down inside your ways here. And then you would tighten that bolt up and that's how you would secure it. Now tightening up the banjo with a bolt coming up here and using like a ring spanner or socket on there is a little bit cumbersome and time consuming. I've seen banjos on other lathes where they have a lever in the front here and it's kind of like a quarter turn or half turn and the banjo is tight. And then when you want to move it, you lift your lever up, slide the banjo up and down your ways or across like this. You can move it like this as well to get the tool rest in the correct place. And then you just move that lever and you know, quarter or half a turn down and it's locked up again in that position. So that's the type of banjo I want to make here. And it's quite a simple mechanism. All it is is a, a shaft that runs down the centre here and the shaft is eccentric so it doesn't turn, you know, on its centre axis. When it rotates, it moves up and down as well. And that's how it basically works. So you would uh, move your lever up and that moves the bar down the centre here to a low position and that loosens off the bolt that you have in the centre here and that's where you can slide it round. And then when you want to lock it up, pull the lever down or whichever way you're going to do it, then that moves the bar up higher and that pulls on the bolt uh, which is connected to a plate underneath and that locks that banjo in position. Now the good thing is I think I can use one of these and just modify it and do some additions to it and we can make it into one of those I guess quick release banjos. The first thing I'll do here is take some measurements and draw up a bit of a plan on how I'm going to build this. And I have done a bit of research and watch a few YouTube videos on banjos. And there's a few people out there that tell you the pros and the cons. So I'll factor those features in this banjo build as well. Okay, I think I have a plan here. Uh, so firstly, I cut off this piece here, which was welded to the old banjo and that will be replaced with a much larger piece Sim similar to this uh, but I'm not going to use this I'm going to use a piece of this 40 millimeter bar and then I can bore the hole out to the right size so I found this 20 millimeter rod I think this is hardened steel so this might be pretty good to use as long as it's easy enough to machine the eccentric parts at the ends there and I've just got it up on spaces here at the moment, but that's probably the position it'll be in. So the plan is to turn eccentric parts at the end here, and then they will go into a housing at the end, or at both ends, and they will run true, which means the rest of this bar here will be eccentric, if that makes sense. And this is the piece that will go 
on the bar so there'll be a hole bored out in the middle it'll go on the bar and there'll be a bolt or a thread welded to the bottom which will go through the uh, slot down in the bottom here now this piece here um, from watching a few YouTube videos a lot of the time this part is right at the end of the tool rest and that can have issues when you need to move this banjo right in um, and then your lever hits the bed of the lathe and then sometimes you can't actually get in far enough so what I've done here is I've taken this piece over to the lathe and I've marked a line in the center of the chuck um, where the end of the banjo here is still on the bed and that means anything out here will be off the bed and um, you won't need to worry about the handle hitting the bed when you tighten it up. And lastly to cover it all in I'm just going to use some of this 40 millimeter by 5 millimeter flat bar and that'll go up the side or up both sides and a piece across the top just to cover it all in. Oh, and of course we would have a, a handle at the front here. So I haven't um, got any steel for that at the moment, but I'll find something where. So I went to the wood turners club and took some measurements and drew up some plans on one of the banjos there. And some of the materials here will be a little bit different to what I just mentioned. So that round stock there, it's about 44 millimeters in diameter. And that flat bar there is 10 millimeters thick. So a few little differences there. Now I wanted to start with a um, nice flat surfaces. So I put the old banjo in the mill and started to mill that flat along the edge or both edges. And also flat on the bottom as well. Now I'm starting on the post that holds the tool rest. I start by putting a center in there and I think this is about 10 degrees angle. Just about all these posts that I see have this little taper at the top. Not really sure why but I just did the same. Then I start to drill out the center. And bore the center out as well. So this is taken out to 25 millimeters, which is about an inch, which seems to be a common size for these tall posts. Now I'm working out where I need to cut a little recess in this round piece so that it can fit into the banjo a little closer. Over to the mill and I just mill out that little piece there. While I've got it in the mill, I'm drilling and tapping for M8 threads here so that it can be used for tightening down the tool rest that goes into that piece. That fits on there like that. Now I'm looking at working on the bit for the back, the 10mm flat plate. And that gets cut off with the grinder. Then we're over to the belt grinder and I'm just putting that angle on so that it sort of fits around the round stock. Again I want to work with flat surfaces so I'm over on the mill cleaning that up. Now I've got everything all squared up and clamped down on the bench here and I tack and then weld all these parts together. Then I start working on the eccentric bar that goes right down the center here. Now looking at the banjo from the club, there was about three millimeters of eccentricity. This is an imperial dial indicator, so I'm dialing up 125 thou, which is just over three millimeters. And I do use a dial indicator at the other end here just to make sure that the eccentricity is parallel. Then I very carefully put a center in the end and then I bring in the tail stop for support because this is quite a long bar that's sticking out. Now I'm turning this down to 20 millimeters. I didn't show it on camera but what I did 
before turning this is I made a mark at both ends and that's my reference point so I can set it up in the lathe in the exactly the right place to get the eccentric in the right place at both ends and what happened is when I turned the first end I actually took that mark off it wasn't long enough so I'm using the mark on the other end and setting that up for the right height and then I'm scribing that mark again back on the end that I've turned and here's a clip of the finished end for the first one. Now I flip that around in the four jaw chuck and I dial that in and I got that in within quarter of a thou or something so I thought that was pretty good. And then I'm checking that I have 125 thou again at this end and then I go down to the other end and I make sure that it's parallel so 125 thou there as well. And then again, very carefully, I put a center in there. Then I can bring up the tail stock and turn the end down. And that gives me the two ends that are eccentric and they are also in alignment with each other, if that makes sense. Lastly, I'm just giving this a bit of a clean up with some fine sandpaper because it's going to have a part that slides on here. Now I start working on the block that goes in the front, so this will have a hole in it and the eccentric bar will go through it. This is 20mm thick steel. I clean it up on the belt grinder and then I drill out the centre hole and we bore that out to 20mm so that it fits the eccentric bar that we just turned up. That is all clamped, all square and parallel along the bottom and the back side and then welded into place. Then it's all cleaned up with the grinder and that fits in there nicely. Now I start working on the block for the back. This one is a little bit different because it bolts on and I don't really have a good way of working out where the centre hole needs to be so I put a bit of bearing glue on there. And I just knock it with a hammer and it makes a mark. Again, this is drilled out and bored out to the right size. Now I've marked out where I need to drill my three holes to hold this in place. And those holes are drilled out to 5mm for M6 screws. Now I use 5mm because I use this block as a guide to drill into the rest of the banjo and that's where the threads will be tapped. There we are tapping the first hole and I do this all separately so I do one hole at a time, do the second hole and here I am drilling out the third hole and that makes sure that everything is all lined up nicely. Now I've assembled it all here and that turns beautifully. There's a lot of end float there and I start working on some brass bushings for that. Those bushings go on the shaft, one on the front, one on the back. Now there's quite a bit of clearance on the bolts here in this block so I put some roll pins here. So there's two of them, they're sort of location pins. And then the end block can fit on there like that and it's all perfectly aligned every time. This is the operation. Very small end float in there now and it spins beautifully. Off camera I used a big shell mill and just planed all this down nice and flat and that came up beautiful. This end plate at the end here, I want this to be a little bit higher than the surface of that banjo so I'm just taking off about half a millimetre here. That's just so if it's taken off and put back on, you know, it's not going to stick down lower and interfere with the operation of the banjo. Now I clean up that groove in the middle, so it's machined out nice and parallel. And I also mill down the front and end blocks to the right height. 
So that is all in there working nicely. Now I need to cut this piece off where this line is because it's a little bit long. And the next step is to make the handle part that goes onto here out of this piece of steel. That will go on there and then there'll be another handle that comes out at an angle like that. I'm just cleaning up the end here first in the lathe. And then I clean up the surface as well. Now I'm cutting a big groove in here because I want to put a taper and I want to do this all in one setup. And then we cut that taper in there. And doing it this way allows me to drill and bore out the hole at the other end where the tail stock is. And that's what we do now. So we drill and bore that out. And then I just give that a clean up with some sandpaper. The final step is to part that off. I need to drill a couple of holes here. This first one is for a grub screw. That's drilled in tap to M8 and that'll stop this piece slipping on the bar. Then I have this weird setup here. This is drilling and tapping an M12 hole for the handle. Now I cut the excess bar off to the right length. I start working on the part that goes on to the eccentric bar. I bore that out to 25 millimeters so that it slides onto the bar. And that works very nice. Uh, be careful. Now there's a thread that needs to be welded to that and I use a bolt and I'm just sort of grinding a bit of a taper on that bolt. But I find out that the bolt needs to be taken down on the back side a bit to fit into the mechanism and then it turns out that it's quite thin so in the end I just turn that piece off. I still have a bit of a curved face on the bolt, so that's able to be welded onto that round ring. And that's how it works. Up and down, tighten it and loosen it. Now I need to make a plate for the ways, and I'm using this 50mm by 50mm square block. Then I put it in the vise to cut it this way, and then I realise that I have some steel that will actually work. So I take that out and I just use a piece of the other steel. Let's put in the mill and we just clean up the sides and also clean up the ends. I drill for a M12 thread and go ahead and tap that out in the center of the block. then the last step is to cut these recesses on each side so that it fits in the ways. And that's the block all finished. I needed to take this thread down a little bit further as well. Then that block fits on there and this is adjustable so this is how you can fine tune the height as well. That slides into the ways and it's a little bit tight so I've got to unscrew it. I'm turning it the wrong way, now I'm turning it the right way and then that fits on there like that. Okay so you saw just earlier there how it fits onto the bed so it just slides on from the end way down there and slides across. Now when I was testing it out I had some issues and I had to make a modification. So this was the ring that was in or on this bar here. And I found that uh, when I loosened it off, it was kind of grabbing when I slided it or slid it back and forth like this. And I 
went back to the wood turning club and had a look at the banjo that they have there and I saw that they used a round piece like this and drilled the hole crossways. So I presume the shape in here, if you can't see that, the shape in here um, makes it grab less, I think, rather than that flat shape that's all the way around there. Um, maybe that's the case, I'm not really sure, but if anyone you know, has some ideas about that, you know, go ahead and put them down in the comments, it'll be good. So anyway, this works uh, quite nicely. Um, it can slide all the way out, slide all the way in. I can get right in to the center if I need to get to the center. Um, and it can just be maneuvered around to wherever you want to put it. Um, it has this lever here. So this is the post that will be used uh, for the tool rest. So tool rest will be welded to the top here and then that just fits in and you can adjust the height and the rotation of the tool rest there. Uh, this is a spring-loaded clamp so you, you know if the handle's in the wrong place you can just pull it out and turn it around to where you want it and then use it from there. So I won't be making a actual tool rest in this video, um, I'll make one in, a, in another video, but to finish this off, all we need to do now is uh, make a handle. So I've just got a bit of all thread here, uh, it's M12, and I want to make a stainless steel handle. So I just have to wait for a piece of steel that I need to pick up from a friend's place, or a piece of stainless steel actually. So once I've got that, I'll be able to make the handle, and uh, I'll cover this part here and here. So it's just going to be two bits of flat, three millimeter steel, uh, one that goes up the side, one that goes across the top, and there'll be, say, four bolts. It doesn't need to be structural, because you have the uh, structure from this 10 millimeter, or about three eight of an inch piece of steel at the back, and then this 19 or three quarter inch um, base uh, that I built this banjo on. And that's all welded together, the front block is welded in, the back block is bolted in because it needs to be removed to pull all this apart, um, but that gives it a lot of structure and strength. So it's pretty solid once you've locked it down, um, very nice, so I'm really happy with that. I'll go ahead and finish off the, um, covering this in and building a handle and then this project is done. Now I start working on these sides. So this is made from two pieces of this quite thin steel here. It's 65 millimeters by three millimeters thick. I cut off a couple of pieces. Then I've got to work out where this round part is and cut that out somehow. The center of that recess is outside the steel, so I couldn't really use a hole saw or anything like that. So I just cut it out the grinder and clean it up with a flat disc. And then finish it off with a file. Then I clamp one of the sides on with a couple of clamps and I drill two holes there. Those holes are also tapped and I put the bolts in there and tighten those down and then that allows me to go back and drill the last hole here for this panel. Now I'm working on the second panel and that's the last hole there so those three are done. And then that panel can be screwed on. Now these panels need to be welded together. And I'm not welding the full length here, I'm just welding in three places on both sides. I'm just marking out the overhang here, so these plates were a little bit wide, so they need to be cut off. And I cut the overhang off with a skinny disc on a grinder, and then I clean it up on the belt grinder here, 
and at the same time I'm putting a 45 degree angle on the join. Also just tidying up the four corners here, putting a radius on them. I'm cold bluing three of the steel parts here. So this will give some level of uh, protection against rust. Once they've been blued and I've cleaned them off with water to stop the chemical reaction, I oil them up and then wipe off the excess oil. And the last two parts, the main body and the cover, are just painted with spray paint. I leave that to dry for a couple of days to make sure the paint goes nice and hard, and then we assemble it up here. The back cover gets bolted on with the three bolts. I tap on that collar for the handle, and that grub screw is tightened up. And then I bolt on the cover with the six bolts there. Finally, I screw on the large T-nut. I've got the stainless steel from my friend, so now I can make up the handle here. This is going to be quite long, so I'm just putting a center in the end. And then I start turning down a bit of a taper here. 10 degrees was too much, 5 was not enough, so I ended up on about 7 or 8 degrees there. Now I've flipped the part round in the chuck, and I'm turning this part down to 12 millimeters. This is the bit that gets screwed into the collar at the front of the banjo, and that has a M12 thread cut into it. Now I need a way of tightening this up, so I mill in a couple of flat spots on that round piece. That stainless steel bar came with a thread in the end of it, so instead of cutting the thread off, I decided to make a little brass threaded plug that goes in the end. That has a M8 thread cut into it. And then I part that piece off. And I lock tight that brass plug into the end there. And just make sure she's nice and tight. I left this diameter a little bit big, so I clean that off with the tool. And then I come back and sand it up with some 320 sandpaper to make it nice and smooth. The handle screws into there, and we tighten it up. That's nice and tight, I won't need Loctite on there. And that's pretty much the banjo done, and it was a great project to do. If you found something in this video useful, then please click on the like button. And if you like my videos and you want to be notified when new ones are released, then click on that notification bell. I hope everyone has a great day, and thanks for watching.